afternoon we're going back to one of my favourite forms of fishing. Skinny water, creek bassing. Going to be throwing some surface lures and maybe some uh, little bit of subsurface, some jig spinners, that kind of thing, depending upon how I'm feeling and what the fish are doing. Both literally and figuratively, it's been a dry spell for creek bassing in my area. Uh, we've had some total lack of rain. Um, up until about a month ago, the creeks were running really low and the bass were just shut down. So uh, it's been quite a while since I've hit any of my local spots. Just recently, we've had some good rain. So I've decided it's time to sneak back in there and see what changes the rain has brought. And hopefully it's brought the bass back and they're hungry. So I'm gonna sneak in for a few hours, see if perhaps it's turned them on and I might be able to uh, sneak a few bites. Keep your fingers crossed for us and come along for the ride. She never left me here, only tells me where she's been. When she's had too much to drink. So what does the E stand for on the fuel gauge? Eh, we'll get there. First cast. Still fairly early in the afternoon for surface action, but you're always a chance in the shadows, regardless of the time of day. So, it is my favourite type of fishing. So that's where I'm going to start. Hitting the shadows with surface. And if I can find shadows near structure, all the better. It's always interesting to revisit a favourite spot after a, an absence, especially if there's been some changes in condition. And there definitely has been here of late, there's been an influx of water. And I've been quite disappointed with how it had fished recently. So my hopes are, are fairly high that we will see a return to previous conditions, but you just never know. That's why I'm in here today. You'll probably notice a difference in my casting technique. When I'm trying to keep my cast low and under overhanging foliage, I'll come in more from the side and try to keep my rod parallel with the water and try and skip the lure in underneath that foliage. Whereas if I'm in open water and I'm either trying for distance or I want to try and get the lure to land a little bit softer, um, oh, <laughs> hello bird. Um, then I'll come more traditionally more over the top of my shoulder um, but yeah just think about the angle of your rod and the angle of delivery of the lure and match that to the circumstance of your fishing I think we can safely say that there's no hungry fish in that little junction there so we move on to the next area Hello Mr. Lizard, please do not fall on my head. Oh, what can I see up there? Mr. Lizard coming to investigate. If you ever do any skinny water bassing in South East Queensland or Northern New South Wales, at least they're the areas that I know, you'll come across lots of Mr. Thin Lizard. They are a cereal pest for lure fishermen. Every snag, every likely looking area where you want to cast your lure that you think a bass might live, that's also where Mr. Lizard lives. 
and he wants to chase your lure every bit as much as the bass does. Oh my, they become a pain in the rectum. Okay, pockets of shade. Be my friend today. Yes, he's keen, but he just didn't hit the lure. Is he going to come back? Oh, come back and have another crack, old mate. It's not unusual for bass to follow a lure for quite a distance. So as much as I want to get that lure back in to the strike zone of where he was, uh, I also work it back to the boat, or kayak as the case may be. Okay, so that's right where he was. Oh, come on. Wind's blowing me off the mark. That was a good hit. <laughs> that got the adrenaline going. Just want one cast to go through that gap there. Just straight through there, but the wind gets you. Once you get up above the creek banks, you can't feel the wind down here, but as soon as you get that lure up above the protection of the creek banks, the lure can do strange things and not necessarily go where you point it. Ooh, salad. No, I don't like salad. Thank you. Somebody might like that for their kayak. The frogs will definitely, the finesse frogs will definitely be coming out here later this evening. There's a fish there, I reckon. feeling in my bones. Maybe that's just arthritis. Come on, Bass. You know you want it. Don't let fear hold you back. Been on the water now since just on two, been on the water for about an hour. So I've only had that one hit. Granted, it was a good hit, but it didn't come back for another go and it didn't find the hooks. So that's been a bit frustrating. The best part of the afternoon is still to come. So I've just got to keep hanging in there and putting in good casts like I have been and be confident that the rewards will come as the afternoon progresses. And the best part of the afternoon swings by. Like a lot of fish, bass do tend to come on the bite dawn and dusk. So as the low light conditions kick in, I'm hoping that the bass are going to start feeding. That, that was a crap cast, that was a crap cast, that was a crap cast. Sometimes they catch the fish, they catch the fish, but not this time. I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, how could there not be a fish in this pocket here? We've got foliage coming down left and right, back and front. We've got 
overhanging grass, we've got deep water, we've got shadows. If you were a fish, would you live in there? Damn straight you would. If you were a fish, would you eat that? Damn straight you would. Then why aren't the fish eating it? Thank you, duck, for scaring the absolute wee out of me. Okay, the time has come for a change. It's almost four o'clock. Sun's gonna start going down in about half an hour. So I wanna concentrate on the skinny water sections back where I've been during that low light session coming up to dusk about 5, 5.30. So I'm gonna switch over. I'm gonna put a Z-Man Frogs on my surface outfit that's got mono leader and I'm going to put a cicada type lure on the other outfit and I'm going to go an all out surface assault stand by And in this last fishable little section before I get back to the car, I finally get a swipe. And it's a pissy little bass that couldn't even swallow the hooks. That's the sort of day that it's been. Is he going to come back and have another go? Does he have a friend? It would appear the answer to both of those questions is no. <laughs> Finally, I'm hoping that you guys can actually see this. We're running out of light. I'm on my way back to the car. It's taken so many casts for this to happen. So many casts. I've really, in all honesty, had pretty much given up. I was casting more out of hope. This is where I started my day casting at that snag. This was where I made my very first cast of the day and this is where I made my very last cast of the day. <laughs> oh, well that's a good fish. Well, I'm very happy with that. I hope you can see it. I hope you can see it. There's not much light left. Not much light left at all, but there you go. A beautiful little Australian bass. Well, not little. He's a good size for a, a suburban creek bass. Good condition. And he has belted that. Yeah, look at that. He's a good size bass.
Well, depending upon how you measure, if you measure to the fork, he's about 33 and a half. And if you're one of the measured to the tip guys, that's a 36. So that's a very respectable creek bass. And that's a little one to three Akuma LRF fishing rod, little five foot creek special that I use. Beautiful. Yeah. Very happy with that. <laughs> As I say, I had fair dinkum given up. I was just casting in autopilot, more in hope than anything. The last rays of sun are just going down. I was contemplating how bad the session has been. I'd had what to, up to this point, I'd had one really good hit. And that was hours ago and a couple of half-hearted little swipes and then this fella he's made it worthwhile see you mate oh. donut saver